Hi, my name is Sungjae Cho. So today is the first lecture. We will start from chapter 2, which is on motion in a straight line. One dimension only. In this chapter, you will learn fundamental quantities that describe motion, such as position, velocity, acceleration. And also, these quantities we can categorize as two different quantities, which is average and these instantaneous quantities. For example, average velocity, instantaneous speed. And the most important part in this chapter is how you describe a constant acceleration motion in one dimension. In one dimension, you need to know position at least how position changes as a function of time to describe motion. Position is a vector. We'll explain what vector is. Position is basically described by plus minus number in one dimension. A number line, also called the coordinate system. For example, to describe the position of Seoul, we need a reference point, which is here. Hejeon is as a reference position, which is zero in number, and put this coordinate system, which is a line from Daejeon to Seoul, where the origin is at that Daejeon. Then Seoul, we can you know, express the location of Seoul, position of Seoul, with a number, which is one kilometer away from the Daejeon in upper direction, which is positive number here. Daegu is in opposite, you know, located in the opposite position, which is 144 kilometer away from Daejeon. But here we have minus sign because the direction is opposite compared to Seoul, with respect to Daejeon, we can call as an origin. So, if you know position as a function of time, then you know a motion. Here, we also define a vector called displacement. And velocity is defined as rate of change of motion. So delta x over delta t is velocity. If delta t is large enough during some you know, time, finite time, that's we call average velocity x over delta t. This quantity we define as average velocity. And this delta dx over dt is a little bit of different from the average velocity because dt is here goes to zero. We call this quantity, define this quantity as instantaneous velocity. And velocity is different from speed. We usually in everyday life use speed. For example, when you drive a car, you look at the speed in the in the uh, the panel of the car. That's not the velocity. That's the speed. Velocity is a vector. Vector has not only has uh, magnitude, but it also has direction. But the speed is a quantity that only has magnitude. It's scalar. So speed has only has magnitude, and def definition of speed is distance over time. So the you see, but the speed ha only has magnitude. That means uh, magnitude of velocity is the speed. If you may, and this derivative of velocity with respect to time, we call instantaneous acceler acceleration. If you, for example, if position is given as a function of time, you can you can derive, deduce the velocity by getting time derivative, or also you can get acceleration at every moment. So only one of these parameters is given, then you can get the other two. So once once position versus time is given, then by getting you know the rate of change of position, you can you can find out velocity. And also find after that you can find out acceleration in a similar way. Basically, time, okay. time derivative means slope, instantaneous slope. Tangential slope in xt graph is velocity. Tangential slope in vt graph, velocity versus time graph, is actually instantaneous acceleration. So, and to summarize, slope, here you can see the position doesn't change as a function of time. That gives velocity zero, for example. Here, the slope is maximum, where velocity is maximum. Okay. So you need to know the calculus. Even if this, this course is uh, exper experiment-oriented general physics, the physics is you, we cannot describe uh, physics, physical laws, without mathematics. It's mathematics physics closely related. Mathematics is a language that describes physics. So you need to be able to, uh, for example, do derivative list. Okay. But we will, for example, laws, not only you can, but we, we even if we d describe the laws in uh, with respect to, you know, mathematical language, you know, the law itself has phenomena. Law manifests itself by phenomena in everyday life. So you need to be to prove that law. You cannot prove it with mathematics. You should prove it with experiment. That's why we want to you know, check all these laws. Not all these laws. We will check. You know, try to do all as many experiments as possible in the course. But we cannot do all experiments. We cannot check all the all the laws by experiments. But we will emphasize. You know, for example, uh, compared to the general course, general physics course, we will we will make you do more experiments feel more phenomena rather than just uh, you know understand laws and concepts by your using your brain <clears throat> so but still we need to know the language mathematical language so you need to be able to do this calculus the derivative for example derivative of powers i think you you already know this if you learn this in, in high school derivative of power is from this uh, if you get the time derivative n becomes n minus one and and here goes to on top uh, in front of this uh, p n minus one and also uh, sine and cosine becomes cosine and sine in a similar way here too. Time derivative of uh, position is 
is the last t times derivative of the last t is x. But it's the, the opposite of x uh, derivative. So again, we started from position vector. If you know position vector, you should be able to calculate, find out velocity by getting time derivative of position vector. That's velocity vector. Once you know velocity vector, velocity time derivative of velocity is acceleration. The opposite process is integration. So instead of uh, position is given, now let's assume that acceleration is known. The other two, we don't know. Then how can we find out uh, velocity and x position vector of an object if acceleration, we only know acceleration? We can do integration. So by integrating uh, acceleration with respect to time, we can get velocity. In the opposite process to what we did so far, time derivative, velocity, time derivative of velocity, we get acceleration but in opposite way if acceleration is known you don't know velocity you want to know velocity then you can do time integrate you can integrate acceleration with respect to time to get velocity and also if velocity is given then you can find out position vector by getting by doing integration of velocity with respect to time that's this position vector so if you understand this mathematics you know derivative is opposite to you know uh, integration very easy to understand the relation between all these three parameters so for example Acceleration is given uh, a t plus b, then velocity is this uh, time derivative of acceleration, and position vector is velocity. And the most important part in this chapter is constant acceleration. This chapter and next chapter. If acceleration is given as a constant value, how do we how do we describe how do we know uh, the the motion? of this constant acceleration. We need to know velocity and position vector, but we, we already know how to get those velocity and position once we know acceleration. We can do integration. V is a B. acceleration, integrate of uh, integration of acceleration with respect to time, which is because A is constant, AT plus V naught. V naught is given only by the physical situation. Even if we know acceleration, we don't know the initial velocity. Initial velocity should be should be given by all the situations, not not from the from we cannot deduce it from acceleration. Again, once we know velocity, right, we can find position vector by integrate velocity with respect to time. Again, x x dot, which is initial position, is not given. Uh, is not cannot be found from the from the acceleration over velocity. Which it should be given in the certain uh, certain you know conditions. Initial condition, we should we should we should be able to uh, find it. <coughs> and you can see that from this three equation of motion, you can by removing time t, okay, from this two equation actually, by removing t, t is what is it? And substituting this t into the first equation, you can find this equation. What does this mean? This equation. Later, we will you will be able to find out the physical meaning of this equation, which is actually work energy theory. If you learn kinetic energy, later we will learn. Even if you you don't understand this concept, is fine. For those who already know the kinetic energy, I'm just explaining this. And then it becomes ma times x minus x naught. What this means is kinetic energy increase, change in kinetic energy, it equals ma, we will learn later, is in Newton's law, this is net force times distance delta x, which is work done by net force work. So net work done on, on an object is equal to kinetic energy increase. That's this equation. But you have to understand this at this time. So. What is the uh, example of constant acceleration motion? That's the, the motion of an object near the Earth. Every day life here, we, we, we see uh, uh, gravitational, under constant gravitational acceleration, the motion. Gravitational acceleration near the Earth is given by this constant value, minus 9.8 meter per second square. Minus means upward is plus, downward is negative. Here is the, uh, the end of the chapter two. We, here we, we learn that we need, we have, we can use three parameters, which is position, velocity, acceleration vector, to de describe motion in one dimension. The relation between those three ve uh, vectors is time derivative of position is velocity, time derivative of velocity okay, is acceleration. Again, the opposite way is integration. So if you know one of these parameters, you can find out the other two. So either uh, among these three parameters, if you know one parameters, you can you can find out the other two and describe motion in one dimension. And most importantly in this chapter, when the acceleration vector is constant, acceleration is constant, then how we can uh, derive this uh, equation of motion. The, 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 uh, the, uh, so if we know A is constant, constant number, how do we know, how, to, how do we find out position and velocity? We can you know, integrate, find velocity and position vector, and you can, by removing t, uh, time, you can find, you can derive this equation. Thank you very much.